Now today I'm going to show you how to make a slab self-portrait similar to the one here. This project's adaptable from first grade till about fifth or even sixth grade. Really any grade can do this. All right. So I'm going to show you how. So first things first is we're going to do a supply check. So you want to make sure you have your clay, your rolling pin, and I have a little piece of paper for a mat. So construction paper works really well for me. Um, so I just have a really big piece of construction paper. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to squeeze my ball. I'm going to squeeze my um, clay into a ball just like this. And I'm not looking for perfection and I'm not rolling it on the paper underneath because I fear at home you can. But in my uh, classroom, I don't like that because it could interfere with someone else's art. So I never want that. So what I'm doing here is I'm rolling it in my hands and squeezing it as I roll. And I'm not looking for anything perfect. In fact, my students will tell you that perfect is just not something that we say because it doesn't exist. So now I'm going to plop it onto my paper. And what I'm going to do is use both my hands now, hey. watching, okay? I'm going to take hey. both my hands and place it on top, and I'm going to push down as much as I can, and I'm going to turn this into a veggie burger. Or a hamburger, whatever type of burger you want. It's not perfect. I'm not looking for perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and start rolling this out. I'm rolling out my clay with my rolling pin. Now, if you're in class with me, it could be that I rolled out a slab of clay for you with my slab roller, but if you're doing this at home, or sometimes I might also just teach this where I'm rolling out. Hey, mama, mama. Oh, thank you. Or I have my kids with me in this video. So what I'm doing... Is that right? Is that right? Yep. So I'm just, now I'm just rolling this out flat. I like to check my clay just to make sure it's nice and even. And it really is. It's looking good. Okay. And keep a close eye on the screen because I'm going to show you a lot in a very short amount of time. So here is what we're going to do next. Take a look. So what I'm going to do is use my needle tool here. And I'm going to... You know what, I'm actually going to do it this other way. I'm going to change this. I just realized the view is off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my needle tool and I'm going to cut my clay in half. So you have to go all the way down to your paper for this part. Did you see? And now what I'm going to do is one of these I'm going to leave alone. The other one I'm going to turn into kind of like a rectangle. I like to just take my extra clay and put it to the side. I'm not looking for a perfect rectangle here because I'm not looking for perfect. So mine is far from perfect. I'll show you what the other side looks like. I like to look at both sides of my clay to see which side looks better. And I think actually this side looks a little bit better. What do you think? So now I'm going to switch these. I'm going to put this over here. Now this is going to really be the one that I'm drawing my portrait on. So keep a close eye on the screen as I show you this next step. So for my portrait, I'm also going to turn it into a rectangle first. All right. And I think this side's a little bit wider, so I'm going to have this side be facing down. I know this is a little smaller than this one. I know it seems a little strange that I have two pieces of clay. Take a close look. So at this point, what I'm going to do is just put these to the side. And I'm going to just draw on my mat really quick what I think I want my portrait to look like. So this is my little planning step. So we're all going to do this. You can choose a marker from your bin. Take a close look at the screen as I show you. So in a portrait, you're including your shoulders, your neck, and your head. And you want to leave a little bit of space at the top. That's going to be for your hair. Okay? We're going to put in our ears, hair, things like this. You want your eyes. Now, your eyes, did you know that they're actually in the middle of your face? So if you look at your face, you're going to see your eyes are actually in the center. Okay? So here's one eye. Here's the other. I know that my marker is fading. It's okay. All right. I'm going to make my nose, and I'm going to make my mouth however I want to. And other things I need are a collar, okay, 
All right, I've done my planning step. I like how my project looks. Maybe there's a bow in my hair too. Have Jackie help you. Well, I'll come help you in a few minutes, okay? I'm designing mine. Are you drawing out yours? No. Okay, so start drawing it out. With a marker from your kit at your table. Oh, I forgot eyebrows. Eyelashes. Oh, freckles, of course. A lot of you kids have cute freckles. So you'll want to put those. Yeah. Okay, next step. You want to just watch me up here? Just watch me and then we'll work after. All right, I'm going to begin to draw mine out. So check this out. I don't want to carve. I don't want to carve because I'm not ready for carving. So just keep your eyes on the screen right now as I show you our next step. So in this step, I'm going to go ahead and make my shoulders just like I did. I'm just drawing though. I'm not going heavy. And the beauty of this is if I make a, a line that I didn't mean to, I can simply use my finger and make it go away. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw my head and I'm going to draw my ears. And next thing I think I'll draw is my eyes. So very similar to how I did it before. So during my planning step, I figured out how I wanted everything to be. Here's my nose. I've got my mouth. Okay, what am I missing? My hair, okay. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I got my hair wrong. I'm gonna use my finger and just get rid of that. So we're not going heavy right now. We're going really nice and light. And I'm just simply drawing this out. I'm drawing it out so I can get it right. Okay, I'm gonna make my little bow. And I'm gonna make my little... Oh, I see, I don't like how that came out. And Maya, would you get me a stamp from over where that wheel is? You see where the wheel is? My daughter's gonna go get me a stamp because we need to do some stamping soon. You can each get me one stamp. Okay. So now. Oh, perfect, so perfect. All right, so I've got a stamp. So this is a fun part. I'm gonna use my stamp. I'm gonna press down. <laughs> my stamp might even stamp the clay that's okay did you know that when i put this in the kiln it's actually going to burn away i know it says mary on it it's going to burn away um all the ink so that won't be there i'm just kind of using my um my stamp here to make cool texture do you guys see my cool texture no. pretty neat right mm -hmm. So another thing you could do is use the back of your little needle tool. That's also a good thing to do if you want to add some fun texture. So maybe I'm putting some texture in my hair. However you want to make your picture is up to you. And then once you're really happy with it, what you're going to do is you're actually going to carve, but you're going to carve around the contour. What was that word? Contour. Contour is the line around the shape. So I'm going all the way around. Now I like to do this like one bit at a time. So I'm going around the shape. I just realized that I accidentally cut my ear off. So you might do things like that too and that's all right. No big deal. I think, do you have one of those? Yes. What okay. are you looking for? Just one of those things. Yeah, I thought I'd put them at your table. No. Oh, right here. Okay, here I am. So take a look. And now I think I'm ready to go ahead and place myself onto my background. This is my background. So something I can do is decorate my background a little bit first with a stamp. So maybe I'm gonna use the same stamp. Now the fun in this is the texture will look really beautiful and really cool once we glaze these later on. So hey. we all know these have to go in the kiln. Hey, kiln do, is my do oven. Another tab. Do another tab. This one here? Yeah. You can put stamps on top of your stamps. Just have fun with it. This says Mary. My name is not Mary. It's Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. All right. Take a look. I'm going to be placing this like that. But can I just place this here and expect it to stay? 
No. <laughs> you guys know I can't do that. So I have to stick it with my special glue, and it's called what? It's called, someone help me. Starts with an L, rhymes with oh. lip. Starts with an L, rhymes with lip. It's slip. Slip is the magical glue that we're going to use. Slip is simply just wet clay. All right, so this will not stick until I go and I score and slip it. So scoring is this. So when I'm scoring, I'm making little marks just like this. Why are you making marks? This is important. So both sides have to be scored because I need the surfaces to be rough. The surfaces have to be rough, and then I'm going to put glue in between. Now, if I put the glue in between two smooth surfaces, it might stick for a while, but then after a while, it'll just pop off. What happens that's really neat with this is the glue actually seeps into the riveted areas, and it makes everything stronger. All right, I'm going to show you my slip. This is different, I know. Usually the slip is the same color as the clay, but I don't have any gray slip available. So instead I have my brown have slip, it? or it's really red. This is from the red clay. So check it out. And actually, sometimes people like to use like a toothbrush for their slip. You don't have to use your fingers. I like to use my fingers. If you're in my class with me, you're definitely using your fingers. It's just not my preference to use mine. Don't worry, throw it out. So now I'm going and I'm putting some slip on both areas where it's going to press. I'm just about ready. And I'm going to go ahead and place this down. And if a little bit of the red clay got, you know, in places you don't want, don't worry about it because we're going to be glazing this whole thing anyway. I go ahead and I press it down. And whoops, I got a little bit of clay on the face. That's funny. That's the slip. But here we are. We're done. All right. Our picture is all finished. And the only other thing is you're going to want to scrape your name and your class code into the back if you're in my class. And that's it. This is how we make our clay self-portrait. And then what's going to happen is these are going to go through the kiln. They're going to get fired at um, about 1,800 degrees. It takes about a day. It has to dry out first. Drying out takes a whole week usually. Then um, I pop it in the kiln with lots of other clay, and it takes another day in the kiln. So it's a very long process, I know. And then um, when it comes out, it's going to look like this. And then what's going to happen is we're going to get to glaze these. So glazing will be in the next video. Uh, I'll show you all my tips, all my tricks, okay? And we're going to have lots of fun with that. I'll see you soon. Bye.